Welcome, welcome, Ben. Good to have you on podcast here. Uh, usually I start with uh, little introductions, if you don't mind uh, introducing yourself a little bit about you, your brand, and you know any type of background that you that you want to share with us. Yeah, for sure, man. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, basically like uh, kind of messed around uh, with this entrepreneurial stuff for a few years now. Uh, I'm 30 and I think it was uh, maybe 2018 when I kind of started doing serious trying to figure out stuff which is you know five years ago now but um i kind of got into the online business world via like the drop shipping um side of things so i kind of did that for a little bit and uh had some failed projects on that front kind of like importing stuff from china uh selling it with facebook ads that kind of thing but i started to learn some skills um after that i wanted to launch a kind of quotes real brand so i uh I was really into keto at the time, the keto diet. Uh, and it is kind of another story, but kind of helped me out with the health side of things. So I wanted to do a keto supplement brand, uh, tried to launch that, got in kind of way over my head with um, some expensive inventory orders and still lacking some of the marketing skills and um, audience building skills. So stepped away from that and decided to just focus on uh, the marketing piece, more specifically copywriting and email marketing. And the idea was to get good enough at these skills that uh, the next time I launched my own project, I I wouldn't fail. <laughs> and uh, so that's been the last couple of years of focusing on that, basically as a freelancer. And now I am getting ready to launch my uh, new brand very shortly, which is The Tallowed Truth, which is... Uh, still kind of in the health field, but a little bit of a different angle on on things than the last time. Mm, interesting. I didn't know you were keto there for a while. So was I. Well, I've gone several different diets. I think I, I mentioned to you before. But um, yeah. Well, what was your first product? You, uh, you said it was keto related. Yeah. So I. It's funny. Like yeah, a lot of these journeys are the same. You discover this stuff, and then you're looking for good products and clean things. And so I wanted to be. I wanted to have a, a brand that um had you know basically healthy keto snacks it was going to be a bar at first but what happened was it is kind of tied into the inventory thing because as you start to formulate things like you realize very quickly why a lot of the products in the market like aren't what you want mm -hmm. it's because it's really hard to make what you do want so i originally was making a bar and i was like formulating it myself um and that was easy enough to do on like a very small scale but as soon as you look at uh doing something like that at scale in terms of ingredients that are shelf stable and that sort of thing it, it gets difficult so yeah it was going to be a bar and then just for um like to make it easier basically i switched to i was going to do like a, a collagen kind of mct kind of shake which I, there's there's tons of them out there but that's that was going to be the mm -hmm. the product and then i wanted to open it up for more things like protein powders and whatnot but yeah that's that's kind of the road i went the first time i see yeah it's funny because like i don't know if you know dave asprey with the bulletproof bar you know he sold his, the company a couple of years back now i think at this point sometime during the pandemic and and uh as soon as the change of ownership the ingredients in the bar changed right like there was like two percent sunflower oil and i don't know what right so it's like not yeah. obviously you know according to bulletproof diet you shouldn't be uh eating any sunflower oil but it's i mean i guess it's less than two percent so i'm i'm i overlook it yeah but it's like oh you sold out you know you, you <laughs> i remember being uh, it's so funny man i got i was down in the states yeah, it was maybe shortly after that. And I, I always like going through Whole Foods and checking out the, mm -hmm. the products and the companies and the brands. And I remember look, picking up his bar and I was like, oh, this is this is great. And yeah, just being totally scandalized by what was in it. But like you said, I mean, not not the worst thing because it's a small amount, mm -hmm. but um, it was like some of the very things that he was like, never eat this. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess it's not in his hands anymore, so you can't really blame the guy. But, but um, yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, the whole health food brand situation, I feel like, Man, like I'm obsessed with health, so I've always I'm always coming up with products. You're walking through Whole Foods, like there's always something that you can think of, right? But just the yeah, the like food products, just it's just something about them that I just want to stay away from for a while, at least. You know, it's something about them that they're just complicated. There's other, you know, you have to deal with the FDA or USDA or you know to get them approved for organic and all these other 
uh, you know, loopholes that you need to to think about, I feel. Totally. And that's why I felt so this second time around a, a lot better about this product and this brand um, because like you said, yeah, that, that food, it's an exciting industry. It's a fun industry. Um, there's like, it's, ex yeah, there's, there's lots of upsides, but um, as a startup, it's really difficult because of all the things you mentioned. Um, so yeah, this time around, I, I, I felt I was able to sidestep a lot of that, but still have some of the things about the food industry that I like. So this is basically the tell truth is a cosmetics brand, um, kind of for this, uh, animal based, um, holistic health, uh, side of side of things. And what's fun about this is, so I'm, I'm basing, uh, the main ingredient around my first core set of products, uh, is it sourced from tallow, which is cow fat basically, um, because it's. I mean, essentially it's something that's great for our skin and it has a lot of benefits, but going back to the food thing, it's like the skin thing is similar to consumable product, which I love in terms of like a, like not a business model, but I mean, you've got that. If someone likes your product, they're going to buy it again. So cosmetics have a lot of the same things going for them that a food brand does, but you don't have to be as, there aren't as many loopholes or, or as many challenges as a food product. I feel like skin, I guess, skincare in general, like it has this sort of vanity aspect that sort of ties people in a little bit, right? Like it's just a, it's a part of being consumer society, right? So it has that benefit. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I think, uh, what do you call this? I, I used to make, you know, ton, like I used to make like bone broth and things like that. And then I just had a bunch of tallow. I was like, well, I don't know what to do with this. So I'll just throw it away, I guess. I don't you know what I mean? Not yeah. If I would have known, then maybe I would have used it for some, some purpose, right? So. How did you end up? Yeah, there? totally. Yeah, it, it's kind of neat because like uh, I, yeah, there was a food route and health route first. So realizing how some things affected me, uh, realizing, I mean, it started out with bait, like just base knowledge of nutrition. Like I used to, like when I first got into keto, like I didn't even know what a carb was. Like I just knew nothing. And so Fair like enough. it started out learning, yeah, learning about like macronutrients, like um how they operate in the body and then going from there to like the more micronutrient side of things where it's like how do these specific things affect me and how i feel and it's like like people i used to kind of roll my eyes and people were like oh like you should you know kind of eat better if you mm -hmm. want to feel better i was like whatever and then really realizing really first with keto really experiencing that in my own life um i started to pay attention to okay these ingredients some of these things really do kind of mess me up or too much sugar or whatever it is will kind of inflame me. And I, I can see a difference in that. And so that was the journey I went through in nutrition. But then when what kind of got me excited again and led to this, this brand, this current brand was that same thing kind of happening like on the cosmetic side of things. Now, it's maybe not as dramatic because like I don't, for me anyways, I, I know a, a lot of people have bigger reactions, but for me, it was just really starting to realize, okay, it's like the same thing that happened in, in the food industry is like happening with the stuff we put on our skin um, in terms of like the deodorants and the shampoos. And I think the scary thing almost is like, it's like a slower reaction. Like, so I don't have all the data here, but like just even in terms of like testosterone levels and like energy, like the scary thing about, about things like, like shampoo and I sound like a freak, like scary things about <laughs> shampoo, but serious and seriously, I, and the deodorant, a lot of these things that we're putting on like literally every day. And I don't think we know as much how, how much they're impacting us, but what we do know, and this is kind of a cool, a cool thing that I've been thinking about recently is our skin is our biggest organ. And we actually, one of the easiest ways to understand how, how we absorb things through our skin is kind of like the same way as, as when we digest things. So we, we kind of eat through our skin. Um, I heard this guy say, say that on a, on a Joe Rogan podcast, I think. And and I was like, that's it right there. I was like, we eat through our skin. So then it's kind of the same thing. It's like a whole other puzzle to figure out how some of these things are affecting us. But essentially it's the same story as, you know, the gut lining on the sort of whole diet side of things and what's messing you up there and, and what's the downstream effects of that. It's the same thing, but from the kind of from the outside in. So I'm building my, you know, my brand is coming back to some of these same pillars, which are, you know, almost you know, obviously like, is this something that's going to build up your body and not have any, any side, any side effects or, or downsides, but also like, um, 
some of the things that I'm trying to work into my marketing and into the very like um, essence of my product is like, this should be almost edible. Like this should be pretty much edible. Obviously, I'm not going to have people eating my product, <laughs> but I did think that would be a cr- I did think that'd be a cool ad at one point <laughs> when I was thinking about de- a deodorant. I was like literally like <laughs> taking a bite and like the deodorant. I'm like, but but that's how clean I wanted to be. And um and my first product, I mean, you could you could pretty much eat it. But yeah, that's like that's how I started to think about it, and that's what kind of led to this this I guess being equally as excited about this like set yeah brand. Yeah, it's a little uh, daunting, you know, like. Your the laundry soap that you use to, to wash your clothes. There's chemicals in that that stay in your clothes and then go in through your skin. And like, there's that whole like, you know, skin's your largest organ, uh, you know, idea, right? So then you can just deodorant. So many things like I don't know. There was Tom's toothpaste, you know, that no no fluoride yeah. toothpaste. So yeah, I know what you mean. Like it, it was a little bit slower, but definitely, definitely seeing change. Um, and, and you know like all these brands, like sort of like Neutrogena and all these things, like, you know, you can't even pronounce half the ingredients that are on there. Right. So it's like, why would I, why would I put that on my skin? Uh, you know, and, and not to bash on anything, but like, you know, it's like, I don't know. I feel like women always say like, oh, men have great skin. It's maybe because we don't put like all these hundreds of thousands, yeah. hundreds of dollars of chemicals on our faces. Right. We're just like washing with a bar of soap and letting nature do what it's intended and getting sunlight and you know keeping a healthy diet so yeah i think maybe we it's a great point like i think maybe we we unintentionally just do a better job of that i i I mean because you're right Mm -hmm. people do like i've heard that before as well and it's like uh i think maybe there's just less less factors right so it's harder to it's harder to screw it up for us i think i think even though we don't think about it as much um guys don't have to make as much of an effort maybe in terms of what they put on their face but so we maybe we just kind of stumble our way to having better skin because there's less factors involved. Um, because like you said, yeah, there's on a daily basis, like typically women are using a lot more stuff on their face. Yeah. Although there's a bit of a push like on social media right now to there's a, like hymns and uh, is it like a few other brands? I think that's one of them that uh, this sort of like trying to get guys to have skincare routines and things like that. I yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm personally like not going to do that. Right. But like maybe I'll wash my face or put a, you know, some towel truth on my on my skin. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I probably won't do much more. So, <laughs> well, it's funny you say that, man, because like uh, cosmetics, like I, I never I imagined myself getting excited about this. And I, I personally mm-hmm. don't like use I don't use a ton of stuff either. But um, in building this brand, I was like, I wanted to start with kind of low hanging fruit in terms of something that someone might use. So I actually have been testing this stuff out on my face and I got some good feedback from a friend saying they were using it on their face and really liking it. Um, that was a girl actually, but, um, in terms of the dry skin stuff, like, especially in the winter sometimes, or whether it's like chap lips or like whatever, it's like, I definitely do reach for stuff and I'm like, okay, well, like I can start with that. And then, um, you know, if I, if I want to or need to use it on my face every once in a while, like great, Mm -hmm. but you know. I'm not going to pretend that I have this like elaborate skincare routine just because I've got like a skincare brand, but I do hope to, you know, <laughs> basically give people some of these everyday things. Um, and then it's so, like, okay, I can opt for something else. So what, what all is the, like, the, the main product, I guess is coming out, right? Like, is it just a, uh, I don't know, is like pre something you put on yeah. before you go to bed or something in the morning? Gotcha. Or, no. Yeah. Yeah. Great, yeah. great question. <laughs> like it has great tallow, question. but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the first product is is just basically a moisturizer. So I've got I've got some of it right here. So it's um uh I don't I can't remember if I showed you when we when we met up. I can't remember if I showed you the product, but it's um it's basically like a a lip balm, um like dry dry skin essentially. So you can use it on your lips, you can use it on your hands. It's it's a basically an all purpose moisturizer. Um, so any skin issue really, and the beautiful thing about about tallow is that it really does kind of like revitalize our skin. So you can use it uh, preventatively or you can use it cosmetically, so to speak, for looks. Like it will it will kind of give you that like glow. It will, um, it will help kind of like enliven your skin. But at the mm-hmm. same time, it's, uh, it's great for anything from like, um, yeah, dry skin or, you know, um, even burns. There's some cool 
like it's great for it's great kind of like medicinally so to speak mm -hmm. too so but yeah the product is basically a a moisturizer um you ever heard of the brand like working hands um mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of a big I one so. I, I think maybe they're just canadian i don't know but um i mean they basically it's kind of it's a great name because it it, it, it it's basically for people who work a lot with their hands and have like essentially dry or cracked cracked hands but yeah this is a it's just a moisturizer um right that works as a lip balm as well, but you can kind of use it for basically any skin issue. Um, still kind of working on the, on the messaging on that front, but, um, yeah, it's called F bomb, which is kind of like a funny play on play on words. Um, but it's made from fat. So there's kind of like the fat bomb, like connotations. And then my whole brand is a bit of a, in some of the, in some of the right, in some of like the copy, I, I, I kind of say it's like, it's like giving the finger to like what I call, what I'm calling big scent, which is like the big <laughs> companies who use the chemicals. So, um, I want to be a bit tongue in cheek, um, with the, with the naming and the branding. So yeah, F-Bomb is the first product. Um, and it's essentially a, a tallow based moisturizer. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, if you, it's sort of like black rifle coffee, right? Like if you can rile some people up, then you can get them to, to back up your product, right? hundred percent, man. Yeah. yeah. And knowing who your, your people are and trying to speak to them and uh, coming back to kind of the, the branding and the, and the business side of things, like this time I'm not, I'm really not afraid to scare peop some people away. In fact, like I want to, um, and that, that's helping me get clear, like on the messaging and who I am trying to market this to. Um, so yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think nowadays, like if you can, like the product is important, but if you can find like a group of people that are like passionate about something and they support you, then you'll have like continuing, uh, you know, continuing clients or continuing audience. So I think yeah, that's, that's a useful 100%. thing to have. You can yeah, launch other products. Totally, man. Totally. Um, and uh, I mean, obviously we like, we met at the capitalism conference, which is, you know, uh, preaching this message, the, the, the mm -hmm. Ryan, the guy who put that on, but, um, one neat thing this time around with, with the towel truth, um, has been people who would not be excited about skincare have gotten excited about my brand. And that's exciting because then it's like, like you said, it's these people that you can launch products to and they're going to get behind it because they like the brand and don't get me wrong. They're going to be good products. They're going to be quality. Um, but like you said, it's like, it's brand first and it's, it's people first. Um, and that makes it a lot easier from a, marketing perspective to to build something that has the potential to grow because mm -hmm. because it's people um not just product yeah i think a lot of the sort of like i was mentioning before like a lot of the skincare brands that i've seen online right now are sort of trying to like maybe a feminize men you know a little bit in their in their marketing and then i feel like yours was the opposite right you're just like oh, like this is like something that's masculine and, and like it's okay it has nothing to do with anything right you can just yeah if you can enjoy the product regardless. The first thing I thought of was like, man, I go snowboarding all the time and I'm like, just freaking split lips, like just, you know, from corner to corner. And I was like, oh, I would just use that guy for sure. So yeah, totally, totally, man. And like, yeah, I used to have like dry hands a lot. It's actually kind of interesting uh, going back to the diet thing, changing some of that stuff actually improved my skin kind of from the inside out. So that's like a side, a side note there. But, um, yeah, totally with the, like the chap lips and stuff. And, and kind of something that I, I liked was like, it seemed like a very, it's, it was like a small problem to solve and stuff. Like it's a huge problem, like mm -hmm. putting bad stuff on your skin, but just having a brand that you're like, oh, like, I really like that. And like, when I reach for that, um, uh, well, I can show you, I got it. I got it right here. Let me just grab my, my, my product. I can show you the, the yeah, brand. Yeah, go for it, go for it. Yeah, so this tin's actually got the label on it. It's not finalized, and I'm not a uh, I'm not a graphic designer, but um, I nice. want it to be yeah, kind of fun, a little bit in your face. Like I said, it's called the for people listening, it's called F bomb, and it's got um, you know, it's got like not vegan right on the bottom of it, like just kind of a little bit, um, <laughs> a little bit of like humor, but very very in your face. And and I wanted it to be just like you know, how could you make something as kind of mundane as your lip balm, 
uh, solving that problem, how could I make that a little more fun? And even something, you know, someone get a little excited about where it's like, okay, that was, you know, boring and a problem before, but then it's like, okay, now I actually, I'm excited with this brand and okay, now it, it you know, it turns this experience of using lip balm. It's like, oh yeah, this is kind of, this is kind of fun. You know, I'm, I'm kind of into this. So what exactly have you thought a little bit about like your target demographic, right? Cause like just personally thinking like, I don't know, I rock climb, my hands are always like, you know, super dry and stuff. I would maybe use it for that. Or like I was seeing snowboarding and stuff. Um, yeah. You know, there's probably a few other examples I can think of, right? I was, I used to do pole vault as, you know, and track and field and stuff. And my hands are always dry as well. So I've yeah. always had like all, some type of ball in my rounds for that reason. So, um, yeah, but yeah, yeah great question. Know. Yeah. And, and, and this has really been interesting because what, what I found and, and the way I started getting excited about this brand was, um, people talk about demographics and then there's, there's a term called like psychographics and hopefully I'm getting this right, but it's almost like where people are at with like a, with a mindset almost. And what I've found is I've tried to speak to the people that I want to serve who are kind of these People discovering that what they put in and on their bodies matters. They're kind of just, they're, they're kind of early in this journey of, oh my gosh, like some of this stuff's affecting me and I can't just trust, you know, anything that says it's, you know, quotes healthy, um, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to like putting it on my skin or, or, or ingesting it. And so they're, they're already skeptical. Um, they're skeptical. And, but on top of that, they have a distrust of, big, big business, big pharma, um, and brands that kind of are just have lost their customers. They're kind of like these corporations that have almost become political in a way, um, and to a lot of people in an unappealing way. So I guess like to, to put it bluntly, people who are kind of, uh, frustrated and fed up with voting, um, putting their dollars where they don't want their money to go in terms of what they're spending it on um, and saying, how can I basically support someone who, who's doing the exact opposite of this? And I noticed myself kind of, especially during the pandemic, a lot of the kind of stuff that went on during, during there, I found my way myself looking for ways to support and get behind efforts that were like, um, kind of like, you know, screw you guys. Like, don't, don't tell me what to do, you know, whether it's uh, like with my body or my health, or, you know, you don't, you don't know what's best because it, it appears that, you know, conventional wisdom has been wrong on so many different levels. Mm -hmm. So what I've discovered is that like, and it's not an original discovery, but that there's a lot of people who have this kind of mindset that are ready for, uh, brands, companies, people to be like, yeah, like screw that. There's a better option. And so, um, all this to say, in kind of my messaging and my, and my content, um, that the, the tallow truth, the name even was supposed to be like, okay, you know, it's tallow because that's kind of one of the, the pillars of this, uh, of the actual products and, and the ingredients. Um, and then the truth, you know, is supposed to be like, okay, like what is the, you know, what's the truth about health? What's the truth about, um, um, yeah, what's like the, the true story here? Um, and trying to be that, you know, you can, you can trust us cause we're on your team kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and people have responded to that, which is, I mean, clearly I'm still like struggling to have the, you know, the absolute clarity in my message, but it ended up being more of like a psychographic kind of than a demographic in that it's been men, women, and people mm -hmm. of different ages. So, yeah. Yeah. It's surprising. Cause yeah, I've been eating healthy for, I don't know, man, probably like a decade, right? Like my journey or whatever you want to call it. And like, there's nothing I love more than a brand where I don't need to read the ingredients, right? Where it's yeah. like, I, I can just trust it. And I know that any, any new product they make is going to be healthy, you know, go to Whole Foods and there's a, like, I don't know, some brand here in Austin is called Siete. It's like, uh, it's tortilla chips, okay. grain, grain free tortilla chips, right? Like I know everything's paleo. I don't need to read the ingredients. Like it's high carb. It's not exactly keto, but like mm -hmm. it's maybe, you know, it's, it's, it's on the healthier side. So it's, you know, you're not eating corn and you're not eating wheat. Um, and I, and I just yeah. know, right. I mean, that was what, what bulletproof was to me a little bit, you know, before, yeah. before, uh, before the change, I mean, still after the change, the majority of the products haven't changed too much, but like I yeah. said, 
but you know, they're just like, Hey, I can, Oh, that's a book. Prefer- okay. I don't need to read the, the, the thing. Cause I spend, I spent, I used to spend way too much time at the, at the supermarket yeah. and are reading labels. Um, and you know, like now I know, right. Like they, that's what product basically is, right? Like it's grass fed. It's all these things. I, I know that all the products are, are good for me. And, um, and I guess the other facet, like you were saying is like, man, it's, it's, it's like an ongoing battle, right? I don't know. I mean, you know, I go to the doctor, I go to the dentist and like, they just don't get it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and one of the things I've realized, like they sort of like look down on this revolution, like you're saying, right? Yeah. Like, well, I mean, they're sort of fed by pharma, right? They're everything they teach. I mean, look back to the origin of like medicine in the early uh, 20th century, like everything started from big pharma and like they started the, the actual medical schools. So like, it makes sense. But, um, but I think there's a little growing population of people that are fed up, like you're saying, and that would definitely read your message and, and, be, and identify with it. Right. Because they're just trying to find a solution and it's all overwhelming. And like I said, the doctor and the dentology medical professionals don't help in any way in any regard. So, so yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely, yeah. Well, however said, man, like I think making health simple again is something that's really exciting for a lot of people because like, dude, anyone who's been on a health journey, it's like, it's stressful. It's, it can be scary. It can be utterly overwhelming. And to start to realize and kind of, I mean, for me anyways, and for a lot of people I've talked to, to start to, to start to take like it, your health back into your own hands and to really, to, to trust to trust, it's really like intuition almost. Um, I'm not like anti-doctor for anything, but to your point, yeah. um, there's a lot of outsourcing of, of what's healthy and, and people don't understand, people don't understand fundamentally like why something might be good for them or bad for them. And there's this, this kind of veil of, oh, it's, it's, a, it's a medication or, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a letters behind a name or, oh, it's, it's this or that. And it's like, you know, like you can just like eat some real food and like put some towel on your skin if you have a problem. Like, like <laughs> I, you know, obviously everything's not that simple, but I, I think there is something about like kind of, and we're in this wave and a bit of this transition, like you said, that's, that's kind of like, you know, health's like not that complicated. And so it's mm-hmm. like, we, we can reclaim a lot of this and, and someone said, and they put it, I like how they put it. It was something like the, the, um, the doctor, what was it like the the doctors are like the final like they're like the last like high priest or something that's still respected like mm. just like it's almost like this like they guess sounds weird but like it's almost like the it's it's like a bit of this um uh there's more to it than just science obviously there's science but there's 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 also um there's a dynamic there the yeah, that, that it's almost like yeah just trust just trust what they say it's like because they they have the white coat yeah, you don't have an MD, so you don't know anything. You you can't logically yeah. reason at all because you don't have an MD, and it's just yeah. like that doesn't apply, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, we can logic reason, read research, and and uh, yeah. make our own decisions. But yeah, I think a lot of people are just looking for simplified health, and you know, eating whole foods, eating meat, eating fruits and vegetables. Like you know, it can yeah. it can be sort of doesn't have to be super complicated. I mean, uh, I guess selling products and such like you all the mushroom powders and this powders and that powders and like people go down rabbit holes buying all these products and you know that's maybe not i think where they should be spending most of their money right they should be spending it like eating you know grass-fed meat eating vegetables so yeah no totally so where do you source the, uh, the tallow if you don't mind me asking because it's grass-fed right so i'm assuming it's like yeah not exactly yeah everywhere <laughs> yeah for sure so uh right now we're getting it from china no i'm just kidding <laughs> um <laughs> love it <laughs> uh no it's cool it's cool i really went um someone that inspired me was uh and it's a little bit ironic now because like bulletproof they've sold and somewhat maybe compromised their original values but native deodorant uh the founder of native, native deodorant uh moise ali brilliant entrepreneur um talked about going on etsy and just sourcing his first product there and i i heard this heard him on a podcast and I was like, I love how simple you made this sound. He, w- he was finding someone who was making a natural deodorant and he's like, well, I'll, like, I'll just go buy, like ask them for a bulk batch and start selling it. And I love the simplicity of that. And that's what got me. I was like, I can actually 
you know, mobilize this idea, I can go on Etsy and I can find people who are doing this. And I mean, to be very clear, like I'm like, depending on which circles you are, I may even be like late to the tallow train. I mean, some people have been doing this for a long time. There's all kinds of mom pop shops and, and like wonderful little brands that are making these uh, amazing products. And so I thought, you know, what I bring to the table, I think is, is kind of this like marketing piece of this. Um, mm -hmm. so I was like, let me go find someone who's maybe willing to basically white label their product. Um, and that's where I started. But then when I got into like, uh, so yeah, I found someone there and I was going to just white label originally the, the, the whole recipe, the whole, the whole lotion, the whole, the whole product. And then I was like, you know, I can make this, like, this is simple. That'll be like, why not just make this myself? Um, and in that way, I'll have even more kind of in intimacy with the brands, knowledge about the product, um, and that kind of thing. But this same supplier was, was wholesaling the tallow mm -hmm. and, and where she was getting it was, so I'm in Ontario, Canada here, which is more on the East central side if, um, for people who aren't familiar, but, um, our capital city is Ottawa and this tallow she sources from a farmer who is just uh, outside of Ottawa and yeah, grass fed cows. Um, so essentially, you know, local farms within driving distance of even me right now. Um, and it's basically just, you know, comes in a, in a bucket. And, uh, so I get it through her. Um, I will, as I, as I grow, I'll have to, I mean, hopefully go, you know, direct to the farmers. Um, but it's kind of neat because it's like, I, I didn't really know this was even kind of like a, an option before I guess, but yeah, there's, there's a, a good amount of farmers who are, you know, uh, processing their own meat and whatnot and, and rendering and then purifying down the, the fat and for everyone, for anyone who doesn't know, yeah, the tallow is just rendered down fat. So you get all this fat off the, off the cow, um, when the, when, you know, when the butcher breaks down and, and you render that by heating it and you're essentially melting this fat and you're left when you strain it, kind of like bacon grease. That's lard, which is the pork fat, um, but tallow is the rendered beef fat. So after you've melted it down and, and strained it, you get this kind of very white, pure fat that you can then use in, uh, in products. Hmm. You get it already rendered. Though. That's right. Yep. Okay. It's already rendered. So I have gone, it's <laughs> funny, uh, like I, I have gone straight to the, um, what's the other name? Butcher's the one name, but there's actually, there's a more technically correct term. Uh, it's escaping me, but where they... It's, it's where they, cause the butcher technically is the cutting up like of mm -hmm. the meat. Um, like the processing plant type of thing. Yeah. Basically the processing plant. There's a specific name, abattoir. I believe abattoir is the name and that's where they kill. I might have the wrong, but that's where they, you know, yeah, basically kill the animal. Um, and so I, I, there's a local one of those that I've gotten. You can literally get like chunks of fat and it's almost free. Like that's the other crazy thing. It's like, it's, uh, this used to be such a rich resource traditionally mm -hmm. and ancestrally. Um, it was used for lamps. Um, I mean, it was used for, you know, when they would make the, uh, the pemmican, which is the dried meat, mm -hmm. like the jerky and the fat, and then they would put it together because going back to the diet piece of this, um, that was one of the only uh, ways to make sh shelf stable, uh, fat and protein was either the jerky, but the jerky, um, uh, you, you didn't want fat to be in there cause it would go rancid. But what happens when you render the tallow? And then the, the tallow is actually stable, like for, I mean, in some case years, um, which is crazy. So it preserves the, uh, energy side, you know, the fats, the energy and the, and the, uh, the jerky is the protein. Um, but you know, the, yeah, this fat, it, there's such a rich tradition of using this fat for four different purposes from eating to, um, to lamps, you know, it's this, it's this kind of rich source of energy that I think is really it's really kind of sad how, how we've lost that. And obviously we went through the whole fat being kind of demonized in the dietary world and all this stuff. Um, but I forget what the, the question was, but essentially, yeah, the, it, it, oh, just getting the fat, like you can get, yeah, you can, you could go and, you know, someone could do this themselves and, and render this down. You could, you could start literally with the chunks of cow fat, but yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And I've actually made pemmican before. So is that? I can't remember. It's been so long, but is that just the fat or is that the tallow as well? Yeah, right. So pemmican is the mix. Um, essentially, usually it's a one-to-one. -one, um, and this is neat because like it slots right into like some of this like dietary world because like this like even the this keto is, model. This is for like for, for listeners. This is like a, a 
like a meat fat combination, right? From that's like right. Na- Native Americans would carry that's it around correct. and like yep. preserve the meat for a longer time. Yeah. So what they would do is uh, when they would they kill a buffalo, so to speak, some of these the plains people or or however they did it, they had to find a way to to make this food last. And so what they would do was, I mean, they'd eat a certain amount of it fresh, um, but then they would dry the meat around the fire, um, and that would be essentially jerky. They would turn that into uh, jerky. The fat they would render down, so they're melting down the fat and turning it into this tallow. And then they would essentially mix those two together. Um, they would they would grind up like with like a what do you call it like a mortise and pestle, or they mm. would use stones to like basically grind up the jerky. And then they would melt the fat. So you melt the fat, and you're mixing in this almost powdered jerky into the fat. And they would turn it into these like little like balls or whatever. And it was called pemmican. I don't actually know what that means, but that's what <laughs> these were. And yeah, and then they would they would basically seal them in these leather bags, and this stuff would it can keep for months, if not years, on end um, without without uh, if, if if as long as like moisture doesn't get in and stuff. But that's how they preserve uh, the meat. And um, sometimes they'd add fruit and stuff into there, or like what's cool is you could take this stuff and you could put it into a stew, and then you could add some you know seasonal vegetables or whatever it was. But this was their way of. Uh, preserving those nutrients yeah yeah so you, you can make pemmican now yeah i've, I've made it and it's i mean frankly it, it kind of tastes kind of bad if you do it just mm-hmm. plain but um yeah it's kind of cool i i would throw like blueberries in there to make it taste better it was like my camping uh sort of mix when i you know when i would yeah. back back country camping or whatever but yeah, yeah I mean, totally tallow just like it tastes sort of bad right i mean i, I like i said I, I used to make bone broth and i used to throw yep. it away because i didn't know like, and then I found out about pemmican, right? But it tastes sort of gnarly. Yeah, know, so. <laughs> yeah. It can have a it can have a weird taste, and um, especially you know if it's like the the main ingredient. It's funny actually. Like side side tangent is like another product <laughs> that I wanted to have was um, so with like a keto keto diet, which I was on for a while. You know, you you you're aiming for the high fat ratio, right? Mm-hmm. In your diet, mm-hmm. the lower carb and the high fat, and um, that can be like challenging sometimes. Um, and so a product I really liked, I don't know if you, if you're familiar with uh, keto brick, um, Robert, Robert Sykes, the, the keto savage is his kind of brand, but he makes the product called the keto brick and it's with, uh, it's like a modern spin on pemmican kind of, it's like with cacao, cacao butter, which is a fat. Um, and then he mixes it with protein powder and it's kind of like this, you should check it out. It's like this, uh, it, it literally is a brick, but it's like a ketogenic, macro protein bar um and so i wanted to do that with tallow i wanted to find a way to make tallow taste good and mix it with like i don't know like protein powder or something so because mm-hmm. it's a great it's a great source of energy it's got it's a fat that's got that's very rich in uh minerals and vitamins and that kind of thing but mm-hmm. you're right like it can be hard to just <laughs> eat it it's good for cooking though like you could use it people often uh like you like to sear your steak or even to sear vegetables or, like, or stir fry it's a great uh cooking base um, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, I mean, olive oil is great too, but olive oil, like if it burns, like you can, uh, I think there's the if you like, point. yeah, the high smoke point. Yeah. So towel is a great thing to have around even just for cooking. I would say, even if you're not going to mm-hmm. eat it or you can rub it on your skin. You can do that. Too. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I think you can like confit stuff as well. It's like a fancy word for just yeah, what is it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know that name. What is that? Duck fat a lot. Yeah. I mean, like French cooking does that. They, they you just. A lot of hunters do that to preserve meat when they have a ton of meat, you know? Yep. But you can just yeah. like, I think you just put it in there for a long time and, and then eventually the fat infiltrates the meat and you just have like a high fat meat and it preserves it. Yeah. But, um, but, but yeah, for sure. Super cool. <laughs> but yeah, so I guess another facet that I wanted to ask you about is sort of like supporting local farmers. I'm really big in, into that, right? Like I know you were saying that, that you're, um, that, you know, you get your tallow from from a local farmer there in Ontario, and mm-hmm. uh, I, I I had a phase a while back where I was getting like local milk from somebody here in in awesome. Texas. I live in Austin, um, and like there's like before you know you get you can't exactly get raw milk legally here in the states. I don't know if you can in, in Canada, but no, you can't. No, yeah. <laughs> it's, and, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to I used to live in California for a couple of years, and uh, there it's like you can get it at the supermarket, which is super surprising to me. But um, but yeah, big milk t- has got us. Big milk has got us locked down over here. 
Yeah, yeah, man. I don't know. People freak out. And it's funny because like my my grandfather had, you know, dairy farms and such. And and like I used to just drink raw milk as a kid and never really thought much about it. You know, I learned mm-hmm. how to like whatever. What do you call this? Milk a cow when I was like five. Yeah. But, <laughs> cool. but anyways, um, what was I saying? Right. So. Like, I feel like there's been a bit of a of an uptick in farmers just going direct to consumer now, like grass fed farmers and such. So I was just wondering, like, yeah. I don't know if you've seen that in Canada at all, but they like, there's several farmers that are just like, you know, they create Instagram pages. They, you know, they're reaching out like that and they have their online platforms and are selling and, and such. So um, I don't know. If you've seen that around in Canada by chance. And I know it's it's growing in here in the States because we yeah. have laws and such to, to prevent yeah. us from from buying nutritious food which is ironic yeah yeah no 100 <laughs> percent, man I, it's been it's been really cool to see and i would i would say it's it's very much the same story up here especially more recently um people are um on a bigger scale kind of waking up to the importance of just like real food and and um you know clean food and and supporting our farmers and it's been cool to see yeah even in my area like you said, yeah, people start to get maybe, maybe it starts at just like a small uh, farm shop or then they get, you know, an Instagram going or an online store and they start um, being able to have a bit of a wider reach. But uh, yeah, I could name, you know, uh, do- probably dozens of, of local, um, whether it be farmers or even, um, uh, so so one of the things in my product is a beeswax and mm. I, what do you call that? I don't know, there's a name for it, a bee farm or something. I don't know, uh, but but there's that, there's that. Um, yeah, that's the one. That's the <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I got like the beeswax for the first batch from a local, a local guy who does that, and it's like they they sell honey and and they do um, some of that stuff. So it's on the rise, like I think, kind of across the board, um, which is awesome. Um, and then maybe you mix in like, maybe you mix in like a bit of this like, kind of like prepper stuff, and it's like everyone kind of feels it. Everyone kind of feels like, oh, maybe I should like grow something. Um, this so is like a home cool. homesteading trend yeah, the homesteading. going on. You posted yeah. something a couple of days ago and I was like, oh yeah, that's for sure. We'll talk about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. My buddy's actually like, he's trying to, he's starting to build a brand around that. They want to just kind of teach, teach some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and because it's really, I mean, uh, in some ways I think it's, it's kind of blowing up. It's like people want to be able to make their own food. They want to grow stuff. They want to, um, almost like this Bart, like they want to, they want to like partner. It's like, oh, you make that, I make this. Like, some like maybe some bartering. Like, it's cool. Mm-hmm. It reminds me of like, I don't know if you ever. I think it's a show called Yellowstone, if I remember correctly. But there's a there's a clip I, that I always replay in my brain. But I, I think there was like a family. I've never seen the show, but I just saw a clip and like there's a family and there's a a, a fridge salesman, right? It's trying to sell. I think it was Frigidaire, maybe when they first started or whatever. But they. You know, they show up it's like, hey, well, you know, buy a fridge so you can store your food forever. And um, and they were like, why would we do that? And it's like, you know, we, how do we get how do we power the, the fridge? It's like, oh, well, you need to plug into the to the grid. Well, it's like if you plug into the grid, I need to get a job to pay for the electricity. And if I, you know, and pay for the electricity to get a, a fridge and it's like a little bit of a vicious cycle. Right. And then, you know, you're not really living for yourself. You're living for somebody else. Right. So somebody else yep. can can get rich. But um, but I that was like an interesting point of view where you know they're re- letting go of their independence just by buying a fridge. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool, yeah. it's a cool example because like it, it is it's this circle sometimes that uh, I mean for the most part we don't think about too much, but more so now for sure. Yeah, I think uh, that's the whole point. Of maybe trying to be an entrepreneur, right? To like have more independence and and not be controlled by anybody you know or not you know living living the life that you want to live rather than uh the other uh, what others or society pushes on you so that's definitely uh up there yeah. on the list of reasons i want to be one so yeah no I, <laughs> I and i'd love to speak to that just for a second because i i totally agree and and i see i see it as like a piece of health honestly um i know everyone's not cut up out to maybe like run their own business but um coming back to this responsibility and this agency over kind of what you're doing and how involved you are in it, whether it's your health or like your business or your finances, I think it's huge for like mental health, 
um, for, for confidence, um, from a practical point of view, as well as like just a quality of life point of view. Um, I think it's like a, I really do think it's a more integrated way to live. Um, so I, I, I agree with you there, uh, 100%. What do you mean by integrate? Well, I think it's important to be like, uh, I, I think for a lot of people, maybe they do a very, uh, specific, they have a specific skill set or whatever it is that they do at their job and they are a piece, they're a piece of the money-making machine, but they're, they're pretty far removed from like what's maybe generating, like not that, yeah, like not that everyone has to be like out there hawking something on the street, like, <laughs> but, but I think there's, I think there's, I think there's a lot of value and I think as humans, we, um, I think we respond well when we are more, when we are closer to the source of, of something. And as an entrepreneur, I mean, it sounds cliche, I think a Gary Vee phrase, but like providing value, like, mm -hmm. or, or, or foster, uh, facilitating an exchange of goods. Um, there's something about that, that is very human where it's like, I give you this, you give me this. And now I, you know, I have what I need to, you know, sustain my family and it, we can connect it. It's like, I grew this or I made this and then I gave it to you and you gave me money for that. Um, whereas well, when, when it's maybe just a paycheck or you are, you are not as involved in the interactions that kind of, uh, like where the commerce happens. Like, I think, I think it's a little, uh, it, you can get disconnected maybe disconnected yeah yeah mm -hmm. i'm still kind of working that out in my head but i think there's definitely something there and we could talk about it but you can see it happen here's a cool example my brother's just starting his own business now he he does uh in floor heating and he's done it for a free work for a guy um for, for years and he's just starting to get some of his own gigs so his first one the other day and he was just he had to, he's kind of grinding you know grill marketing um kind of mm -hmm. trying to get his first his, with a ser local service-based business and he got, had his first job and was just he was so fired up. I mean, he made great money, which is obviously great. But he said, you know, it, it was my it was my responsibility to, you know, you know, find the, the customer. I had to de deliver the service. I had to speak with them. I had to, um, you know, complete the job. And then, you know, he paid me for it. And he was just like, he's like, is this what it feels like to be like in business for yourself? And I was like, heck yeah, man. Like that, like that's it. You could just, you could see this change and I've experienced it many times now myself but i i don't know like if someone who's listening like if you haven't experienced that you need to experience it and then i think we reason it back from there why it's healthy but it just is man yeah yeah yeah. it's maybe it's like kind of taking ownership of your life right like you're you're more in control maybe you know yeah yeah there's there's different pieces but like it's mm -hmm. i think it's i think it's kind of like there's something about it that's just it's good for us to do that. And then we feel good when we do it. So it's healthy. It's healthy. Yeah. Fair yeah. Enough. Yeah. I, I always think like, you know, if, if you're like a super specialized skill, let's say, like, I don't know. I mean, I'm an engineer, right? I guess that's a specialized skill. Uh, like if, if you took that away from somebody that isn't entrepreneurially minded, maybe, uh, if you let me <laughs> that way, um, then like what left, right? Like suddenly they're sort of maybe stuck in limbo, like, like, because like you were saying, when you're an entrepreneur, like you're more integrated, right? That's the word you use. Mm -hmm. so it's like you have more capacity to do more things and you're more holistic as a person rather than super specialized. And if one part is taken away, like you're fine, right? You, you land on your feet. Uh, yeah. And that and that maybe gives you a sense of security and, and uh, confidence. Uh, yeah. Changes the way you live your life, right? Yep. No, totally, totally. Um, I mean, it's it's competence at some level. I mean, there's no way there's no way around that. Uh, it, it's competence to not just have a piece, um, a, a piece of what it takes to essentially, you know, build some sort of enterprise or or um, business, but to start facilitating that, to start kind of stacking the skills together, the soft skills, the hard skills. Um, there's a level of competence that. I think just makes every area of your life better. Yeah, I think the world could use one thing right now. It's more competent people. So <laughs> that's always that's always a good thing. Hundred percent.
Well, hey, uh, Ben, thanks so much for, for coming on. I, I enjoyed our conversation. Uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can do this again. But um, yeah, maybe you can share uh, how people can find you on Instagram, on, you know, if you have a website and such. Yeah, man, for sure. This is awesome. I, like, I love talking about this stuff and it's cool to find someone who's like, you know, whether it's the health stuff, the product, like kind of just, you know, get it and similar interest. So yeah, I had a lot of fun here. Thanks for having me. And for sure, yeah, it's like, uh, it's the Tallow Truth. So it's at the Tallow Truth on Instagram and then the Tallow should be live in like a few days. So probably when this comes out. So yeah, check it out. And uh, yeah, uh, look forward to, um, look forward to sharing the journey. Awesome. Awesome. Launching soon. That's good. Good to hear, man. Alrighty. Thanks again, man. All right, man. Take care.